Hello and welcome to tutorial 151 part 2. If you've not seen part 1 that would be a good place to start and I'll put a link at the top of the screen so you can watch that. But in this part of the tutorial we're going to be looking at this program here which is underscore tutorial 151 scrape drawing object data. And what this does is it takes the horizontal lines drawn on the chart and it grabs the information about those lines. In other words, price, color, style and weight. And it updates that as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do is look at a once event. Uh, we've got the namespaces here and intervals and we go down the program until we get to the bottom of the program where we have the one statement and uh, what this does is it creates the global dictionary it clears the global dictionary and it uh, instantiates creates two vectors line refs and line vowels and then what we do we call this method scrape drawing objects so let's just go back to the, uh, the top of the program and you'll see here we've got this scrape drawing objects so what this does is it clears the uh, the dictionary we then have a very useful facility here that uh, the drawing objects class dot items square brackets will tell us or will create a vector of the drawing objects that are on the chart so if you're not sure about that if you right click and look at definition of drawing objects and then you'll be able to see all the enumerations for all the different lines and uh, objects drawing objects that you might have on a chart just click here to uh, object category and you'll see in the case we're going to be looking at horizontal line that's number 12 which also includes horizontal line created by analysis technique 10 and horizontal line created by drawing object which is 11 and we want both of those so we're using 12 so that automatically puts the line into a vector and then what we do is we just use a simple counter to go through that vector and for each line we store it into a into an eight into each line a, a horizontal line object we then having done that call yet another method called read lines and what read line does if we just scoot down here is we clear the vector line vowels and then we simply use pushback to add the information about the line into that vector so for example price the color which is uh, split up into alpha red green blue and then the style and the weight that's all that uh, does having got the information into this vector what we now do is add that vector into a global dictionary so we're using temp ref which is uh, made up of share ref which is user input and uh, as you may remember the share ref has to be common between the charts that uh, we're going to be sharing information with and the number of this the string based on the counter and then uh, if the temp ref is already there we uh, throw a recalculation exception otherwise we add that to the global dictionary so that is when the program is first applied to the chart or when it's restarted. What we also do is we use a timer and there may be other ways of doing this. We could have used, for example, a charting host to determine when, uh, when a line had been drawn on the chart. But it seemed to me that this didn't work particularly well or didn't work at all when a program itself was drawing lines on a chart. Um, based on particular times or whatever so we're using uh, an event and we uh, we set up the event the timer event in the one statement if you're not familiar with the timer it's very easy to use you can simply go to toolbox and then double click on timer and uh, you can either leave it as uh, uh, an element in the tray or you can copy it from the uh, designer generated code but we're using an event with the timer and that event fires based on a user input if you remember from the uh, start we had this int in integer i and in interval one which is set up as a number of milliseconds so the uh, the timer fires every so many milliseconds and uh, when it does here it is we go through a process a little bit similar to what we've done in the one statement in other words we get the the uh, the drawing objects into line refs we find the count but what we do differently now 
is we compare the line count with what the line count was the last time the, uh, the, the elapsed, the uh, timer elapsed. And if you were to go to the bottom of this very same method, you'll see that what we do is we store the line count last T event. We store the line count into that. So that basically stores the value of what line count was the, uh, the previous time this event uh, elapsed. If the line ref's count is greater than zero, we then go from counter zero to line count minus the line, line count last T event minus one. And uh, having done that, we just go through, basically going through new lines that have been added to the chart. So I just added a little, uh, a little bit of print code here to try and explain this a little bit better. So if we go to the chart and if we turn on the print log, so I'm just going to clear this for a moment and uh, you can see it's clicking along line count, line count, last T event. And I've got this set up on quite a big interval at the moment. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a horizontal line using the drawing tools. I'm going to pop that on the program like so. And we just need to wait for the timer. You'll see that has occurred and the line is there. But if we look at the print statement, you'll see that um, the uh, the counter timer elapsed event has occurred and you'll see that we're going from zero to zero and that is 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 firing this little method and uh, storing the values based on the new line that's been added in that particular case the line that we just drew was stored into h line we then went through read lines which we just looked at got all the information about that line and then that was added to the global dictionary. Now another thing could happen and that could be that the line count when it compares to line count last T event is actually less because we've removed a line. So what we do then and let me just show you what happens. Uh, got this line here I'm just going to delete that and then as soon as the update event refires then we're going to see that uh, the whole program was basically uh, a recalculate exception was fired. In fact, we did two things. We removed an element from the global dictionary and then we threw the event. So that is the, uh, the two main parts of this program. The one statement that uh, does the initial storage of the values and then the update event that looks for new values or looks for when the number of lines has gone down. So uh, I hope, hope that's useful and uh, please look out for part three of the video because then we're going to be looking at the program that reads the information from the global variable, the global dictionary when an update event has occurred. Thank you.